Well, boys and girls, good morning or good day, and we are coming to you again with another CHAMPS lesson. Today we're going to be doing Home Alone and Child Abduction, and I am Deputy Edwards. And I am Deputy Smith. And we are presenting this lesson to you today. I think this might be our final lesson, if I'm not mistaken. So let's get started. Home Alone and Child Abduction. Just the title in itself says a whole lot. And we all know this film, Home Alone, right? Mm -hmm. And it says, many children and teens spend several hours at home alone after school each day. To this day, that is actually true. And for true. those of you that didn't see this movie, it's a good movie to watch right now while you guys are home yes. and going through this pandemic. It's a very, very funny movie, and the whole family will probably enjoy it. Absolutely. So, there are some safety rules that we want to go over with you guys, if just in case there are some of you that are still home alone by yourselves as we speak today, and mom and dad or your caregiver has to go out to go to work, right? So let's just get into our safety rules while you guys are at home. The first one says, it is very important to have a set of rules, a contract or an agreement while at home alone. Why do you guys think that's so important? Why do you think that's so important, Deputy Smith? I think it's important because it, it, it establishes, you know, a set of ground rules for you and your parents, you know, particularly you, so that you can follow what your parents are expecting while you're home alone. Perfect. And so what are some rules that all children should follow? Mm, good Those question. Those are very, very good rules. So mm -hmm. let's go over one of them. I think one of the most important, important rules is while you guys are at home, do not answer the doorbell for strangers. That's a real good one. Right? What yeah. are some other rules that you can think of, Deputy Smith? So uh, don't go outside. You know, if parents have, you know, told you to stay inside, you know, don't disobey their commands and stay inside. Exactly, exactly. So home alone rules. What kinds of snacks will be allowed, right? Ooh. Meaning, can you guys touch the stove or can you only no. operate the microwave? What chores need to be completed? Right. Now that you guys are home, I know that your rooms are probably, I don't know, looking a little chaotic. Mm. Maybe that's one of the chores that you need to complete for today, right? Can the telephone be used? Oh, wow. Mm, that's another good rule. Mm -hmm. Can the internet be used? And we did a yeah. lesson on internet safety, and that's a very good rule. That's a big that one. You guys need to get permission from your parents before you go on the internet. That's correct. Do you need to call a family member at work and let them know where you are, that you are home? Well, right now, this would be a very good rule if we were in school and just getting off the bus and coming mm -hmm. home, right? So let's keep this rule in mind when you guys go back to school. And I was, was going to say, unless parents are at work, you, you know, during this, you know, stay at home or if they're essential workers, you know, that, that needs to be followed as well. There Please you call your parents if you're leaving. Can friends come over? Well, right now? Me personally, mm. I think that's a no-no. But when you guys go back to school, this is something that you should talk to your parents about while you're home alone. Can your friends come over? Should homework be completed first? This answer, yes. All the time. All the time. Do I answer a knock at the door? No. no never. Never. Unless mom or dad or your caregiver tells you while they're on the phone with you that, hey, Maybe a family member is at the door and let them in, but other than that, absolutely not. Absolutely not. And can you guys think of any other rules that you can think is important while you guys stay at home alone? Mm. Well, discuss those with your, your caregivers or your parents, right? And do you and your family have a safety plan? Safety plan. This is very important. Deputy Smith, what do you think? I think that this is very, very important because we all need to know how to get out of the home safely in the event of an emergency. So safety plans are always a thumbs up for me. Absolutely. And while you have a safety plan, it's important that you practice it like a fire drill. You practice your safety plan and you go over it because sometimes safety plan changes, right? So it's good to have like a little home drill maybe instead of a fire drill. Maybe you have a little home drill and figure out the ways to navigate your safety plan. What would you do? This is a question that I'm going to ask you guys to think about it. What would you do if the power went out? Hmm, great question. Very good question, right? I think I asked a student of mine, and great one question. of my students said that he would go outside and actually turn on the generator. Do you remember that student? Yeah, I do yeah, remember that student. He said he would student. go and get the generator, turn the generator on to power up his house. Mm -hmm. I thought that was very smart. Yeah, that was. 
What would you do if someone was trying to break into your home? That's another good question. That's another good question. What would you do if a fire started? Mm. That is another good question, right? Or if the toilet overflowed? Mm -hmm. These are like very good questions that you and your parents or your caregivers can go over along with your safety plan, right? And this contract right here is in your books, your chance to, books that we give you guys. This is a contract that I always tell you guys to go home and discuss with your your caregivers because every household should have a contract or an agreement for emergencies. Child abduction and safety, kidnapping and awareness. Mm -hmm. Now this topic is something that Deputy Smith loves to talk about. So I'm right. going to leave this part up to him. All right. So when we talk about child abduction and safety, it, it is very near and dear to my heart because I had a young friend um, in my earlier ages who was actually abducted. And so I think it's very important that we talk about, you know, this particular presentation in conjunction with you being home alone. All right. So abduct, what does that mean? Let's look at the definition of that. To seize or to take away. And young people, while you're at home and you think it's cool to have, you know, your friends over and opening the doors for strangers, I want you to know that there's still danger even in opening the doors for what you think is, you know, your friend or someone at the door, you know, possibly even a relative, you know, someone that's close to the family. So that word simply means to seize and to take away. Let's look a little bit further at what this presentation has to offer. It's a person to take away that person by force. And we see a lot of this, you know, and we want to um, as much as possible uh, help to decrease uh, abduction, child abduction. And uh, right now it is very, very popular in terms of what we call human trafficking, human trafficking. Um, who are child abductors? And that's a great question that I think you need to know who they are. So abductors can be, um, as we would see, abductors can be, you know, when you look in this big circle right here, we're talking about a whole lot of people, but abductors can be family members or parents. Uh, they can also be relatives. Um, who else can they be? Neighbors. Um, and then there's friends. You know, so we have quite an extensive list of who abductors can be. Is there another one? Yes, absolutely. Strangers. So we're looking at all of these you know, abductors. And the status that we find to be factual is that every 40 seconds, a child becomes missing or is abducted in the U.S. Three distinctive types of kidnapping. Well, you got the family member, you know, uh, Deputy Edwards, does that say 49 percent? It says 49 percent, and I'm sure that number has increased greatly since this has been made. Right? Uh -huh. And a lot of kids will say, well, how can your family abduct you or kidnap you? Right. Family can't kidnap you. Can family kidnap you? Yes, right? they can. Yes, they can. Yep. You know, sometimes mom and dad, they, they split and, you know, sometimes they're not in total agreement with each other and one wants you and one wants you. And that's a little thing where we can get into another time, but family members can abduct mm -hmm. you. So can acquaintances. Acquaintance. And that number is staggering as well because that's 27% you know, when it comes down to acquaintance and then strangers, you know, which again is very high, you know, statistically 24 percent. And as Deputy Edwards has already stated that these numbers have increased, you know, over the years. So uh, we want to make sure that we are preventing abductions. OK, how do we do this? Use the buddy system. There is strength in numbers. How many of you guys, when you're playing, you know, outside, you know, are actually playing in a group of kids? And when you play in that group, it helps to shield you, okay? Um, then, while you're outside playing or on the playground or at the park or something like that, there's a big do not approach strangers in vehicles. And I know sometimes you guys think that it's disrespectful not to answer an adult if an adult is talking to you. But Deputy Smith and I want to let you know that if you do not know these adults, you don't have to speak to them. That's not being disrespectful at all because I'm sure your parents have already emphasized do not speak to strangers. And we're here to back up what your parents have told you. Do not 
approach a stranger's vehicle, do not even speak to them. Right. Do not cut through alleys, you know. Um, and that's another important one right there. I don't know if you guys uh, enjoy, you know, uh, trying to cut corners. I, I think it's always bad, you know. Uh, alleys can also be considered through backyards or through someone else's yard that you do not know or, you know, have not been given permission to do so. So be cautious and careful in regards to that. Stay away from abandoned places, abandoned, you know, houses, Abandoned vehicles, abandoned boats, you know, abandoned barns, abandoned trailers, you know, all of those could be very dangerous places. And we do have squatters that oftentimes would squat in areas like that because of their displacement. But you, you know, you don't want to meet any anybody that you don't know. And especially if you don't know if they mean you any harm or good. So just stay away. All right. Stay away. How to prevent abductions. You know, share a code word with your family. You know, I always enjoy that right there. So you're, you're on the way home and parents are at work. You know, when you get home and you're in the house securely, you know, and somebody comes up to the door and they knock, you know, and you don't know who it is. They ought to have a password, you know, a code word, you know, that mom or dad has shared with them because they know. My daughter, which very young. It works good. Beware of adults who want you to keep secrets. You know, and that's a huge one for us. You know, there should be no secrets between you and your mom or you and your dad or you and your aunts or you and your uncles or you and your friends. There should be absolutely no secrets between you and relatives. And if you do have some secrets, you know, you should consider going to mom and dad and talking to mom and dad about those secrets that someone is telling you to keep. Do not accept car rides from strangers. Deputy Edwards is going to speak on that one um, because I believe she has a great bit of information on well, that one. Says do not accept car rides. I know a lot of you nowadays, everything is instant and want, you guys want to, you know, get to where you're going a lot quicker. But my thing is slow pace gets you there safely. So do not accept car rides from strangers. You right. guys could be walking home. Sometimes your bus drops you in the front of your subdivision or your neighborhood and you guys live way to the back and maybe you might have seen a person in your neighborhood before and they offer you know you to get in the car and they'll drop you home. Absolutely not. Right. I say take your time and walk it home. If anybody should pick you up that should be your parents or your caregiver or a trusted adult. So absolutely, absolutely do not accept car rides from strangers for anybody you don't know. Even anybody that you're acquainted with, if mom and dad or your caregiver did not give you permission to be with that adult or accept a ride from that adult, please do not accept any rides. Just say no. Just say no. Ask your parents to keep up to date pictures and information about you, such as photos, Absolutely. fingerprint cards, hair clippings, you know, um, anything that would help to identify you if something went wrong. Our, our goal is to keep you safe at all times. So we're hoping and praying that nothing would ever go wrong. Absolutely. So what should I do if I am abducted? Let's go through that. Fight. Fight. You know, when I'm in the classroom, I actually get into role plays with the kids and they start laughing and think it's funny. But really, this is something very, very serious. Yes. If you are in danger or if you feel fearful or, you know, that sixth sense kicks in and tells you that this situation that I'm in right now is not right, fight. Fight. Next thing is scream. Scream. At the top of your lungs, scream. You know, call for help. Help, mm -hmm. help. You know, at the top of your lungs, get attention that from people around you. Draw as much attention to the situation and yourself as possible. And this, we are very serious about this. And you guys might be home and laughing and thinking it's funny. Yeah, it's okay to laugh about it now, but please, please pay particular attention to these things that we're trying to tell you. Because Absolutely. Because we don't want it to happen, but just in case that it does, you guys will be prepared. Mm -hmm. How do abductors lure children away? Well, they find children who keep to themselves. Like I said, when you're outside, you know, d don't travel by yourself. Always travel in a pack because that's what abductors are looking for. Individuals who stick out, who are by themselves. Make up stories to have you follow them. For example, 
I've lost my puppy. Can you help me find my puppy? Debbie Edwards, have you heard a lot about that yes, particular one right there? Definitely we have. Mm -hmm. A lot of these things we put here because the situations has already occurred. And what more would attract a child other than a cute little puppy or some candy or free anything, free food, free gifts, free prizes? This has happened in the past and that is why we have included in our video. So yes, I have lost my puppy, can you help me find him? You know, because you guys are gonna be so empathetic. Oh my goodness, let me help you find him. He must just be so lonely. These are things that they will tell you to lure you and get you to walk away with them. And once you walk away with them, then who knows what's gonna happen. Absolutely. And you do and it's not gonna be good. Right, right. Uh, I am lost, will you help me? Well, that's still a poor, you know, uh, excuse or, you know, that a stranger could give to you because nowadays we have GPS system, you know, and it's on on our phones and, and you can buy little GPS systems, you know, or, you know, an adult should be responsible enough to go and find another adult to ask for directions rather than coming to a young person for directions. Uh, they will lie to you. And just remember at the bottom of the screen what uh, it is said at the bottom of the screen. They will lie to you no matter what. However they can get you in that automobile, you know, or whatever their, you know, choice of vehicle is, they will absolutely lie. So be safe, be smart, and think about the decisions that you are making, okay? What, uh, okay, so we're going we're gonna to go to that. What do all of these children have in common? And let's talk about these faces that are on the screen right now. Um, it, and this is not a scare tactic. This is actual truth, actual truth. And, you know, over the years, we, we found that young people were abducted. And, and now we're, we're in an age where trafficking, human trafficking is, you know, so common. And they are either trafficking for two reasons. Number one, for organs or number two, to make you slaves of a sex trade. Either way, we want to keep you safe from either one. So Jessica Lonsford, age nine, was abducted. And then you would find Mr. Levi, who, uh, Frady, at the age of 11, who was abducted right there in the middle. And from him being abducted, if I'm not mistaken, that's how we got the Levi's car, correct? That is correct. So... We're going we're gonna to discover in the next slide, you know, some more information in regards to the Levi. They were all kidnapped. That's what they have in common. Because, you know, again, they may have been out playing by themselves or, you know, walking uh, from the bus stop by themselves. You know, something where a stranger had an opportunity to come up and to get them, uh, lure them into their vehicle. So they'll lie to you. Four out of five were murdered. You know, four out of those five pictures that you just saw were murdered. So what does an abductor look like? Here's some pictures of Joseph Duncan, you know. Uh, there's another picture of Mr. Uh, Jesse down at the bottom who abducted Megan. You know, um, you'll find Mr. Joseph Smith, Mr. John uh, Cooey, you know. And then this fella in the middle who abducted Levi Frady is still unknown unsolved to this day have no idea but it is very serious so you may want to consider what we're saying and take it very seriously we hope that you do okay here's some more pictures you know and just a side note on this particular picture is that we see not only men but there's there's a woman there you know so can women be abductors absolutely, absolutely. okay here is the Amber, you know, uh, Hagerman, age nine, who was abducted. And this is where the Amber Alert comes from. Abducted January 13th, 1996 in Arlington, Texas. Her abducted, abducted uh, she was abducted less than a mile away from her home. Amber body was found four days later, less than five miles away from her home. <laughs> that is so sad. Uh, nonetheless, it is happening. And we hope that you would, again, um, remember. And so from that, that's where we get the Amber mm -hmm. Alert. So the Amber Alerts, they are emergency response. You'll hear that go over your phone sometimes, your yes. TVs, that loud little beeping sound. 
And that basically, it sends out information about a person who is missing. So every time you hear that little thing go over your phone, that loud alert, that means somebody has been snatched and or kidnapped and they are missing. And that is a way for us to get a signal out so that everyone can be on the lookout and be aware of the situation of what's going on. Right, right. All right, so here's Adam Walsh. Um, his father, you know, is working very hard. Uh, he has a, a television uh, show that, you know, that talks about uh, uh, the most wanted in America. But Adam Walsh, at the age of six, abducted on the 27th, July 27th, 1981, from a toy store in Florida. His mother was only 75 feet away. All right. So this didn't happen outside. This didn't happen while he was walking by himself. It happened at a shopping mall where his mother, you know, was 75 feet away. And and some person came up and, you know, convinced Adam to go. He was found 15 days later, murdered by his abductor. Abducted December 7, 2011 in, in Canton County or Canton, Georgia, which is very near to us was abducted from the playground of an apartment complex where she lived her body was discovered three days later at the apartment complex in a dumpster listen uh, you know it, it doesn't matter the age doesn't matter the size an abductor when he's after you know his next victim he will do anything he possibly can and these are more victims and I mean we can go on, on and, and on. on and on and on you know, this, these are just a few that we're putting up here, and we do this because this has happened. This is Levi, and again, that's where the Levi call has come for, from, and this happened all the time. It happens every day, boys and girls, so please don't take these pictures that we're showing you or lightly. Your guys are around the same age as these young, young kids were at the time of their abduction, so this is something that's very, very serious and is near and dear to our heart. Another victim. Yep. You know? Yep. Jesse Longford. You know, and all of these children. Over and over. All of these children, basically, they were not found alive. So, this lesson comes to you just to tell you to be careful, be aware, know your surroundings, don't talk to strangers. Everything that we have told you, I am sure your parents have spoken to you guys over and over and over again. But some of you are just you know, in the thought process that this will never happen to right. me or it can happen to me, but it very well can. So that's why we brought you all of these presentations in all of our lessons, just to enlighten you and to make you be aware. Yeah. So, you know, as I was telling you that I had a young friend uh, back in my elementary days around your age, and uh, we were in, you know, uh, Decatur at the time when the Atlanta missing and murdered children was going on. We thought the same thing. Hey, this can't happen to us. You know, we're too fast, you know, um, and we're, you know, we're too strong. Uh, but it did, you know, and one of one of my friends, you know, uh, was abducted uh, uh, in that Atlanta missing and murdered children. So it can happen to anyone if you're not paying attention to your surroundings. Our job is to make you understand the, the seriousness of it. And to pay attention to your surroundings, pay attention to what your parents are telling you, your teachers, you know, myself, Deputy Edwards, Deputy Greg, you know, um, we just want you to be safe. And this is why the sheriff has us doing what we're doing so that you, you can be safe at all times. Okay, so let's review. What are some good rules to follow at home? And when we ask you these questions, we definitely want you to go home, go back and discuss this with mom and dad yes. and your caregiver because each house is totally different. And everyone's rule, my rule, might not be Deputy Smith's rule. Right. And his rule might not be my rule. So when we review and we ask you all of these questions, please go back to your parents and review and ask questions and find out what it is that they would like you to do best. Mm -hmm. So what are some good rules to follow at home? What are some consequences of not following those rules at home? And we always talk about myself, Deputy Smith, and Deputy Greg about consequences, right? Mm -hmm. yes. Every every thought process, every action has a consequence, whether yes. good or bad. Mm -hmm. What kind of people abduct children? Is it a special kind of person that abducts children? It is. Is it not a special person? 
These are the things that we want you to kind of think about. Mm -hmm. What can, or sorry, what can you prevent from being abducted, or how can you prevent if yourself from being abducted, and how do abductors lure children away? So these questions are very important questions, and it's mm -hmm. a good conversation topic for you guys to sit down and have with your caregivers and go over and just discuss and talk about. Right. All right. right. So this has concluded our lesson on home alone child abduction, and hopefully you guys learned something from this lesson. It was a very kind of long lesson, but it's a very important one. So mm -hmm. the length of it is not important as to the information that you get from the lesson. Correct. So that has concluded our lesson for today. So on behalf of myself, Deputy Smith, Deputy Greg, and Sheriff Ezell Brown, and Newton County Sheriff's Office Champs Division, mm -hmm. we just want to say please be safe. Take care of each other. Take care of yourselves until we see you on our next lesson. So long. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.